Hello, welcome to this DCS F16 tutorial. In this video, we will cover our EW and countermeasures. To begin with, our EW was turned on during our startup utilizing this panel here. And our jammer was turned on and set up utilizing this panel here. With this panel all set up and these switches set appropriately, we can turn our jammer on utilizing countermeasure switch aft and turn it off with countermeasure switch right. I'll press aft, I turned on my jammer. You can see it here with the ECM button lit up. I turn it off and now it is off. We'll cover this in more detail and what its ramifications are in air to air. But when it is on, a quick rundown is our air-to-air -air radar is disabled because we cannot fire and lock a target while we are jamming. This is generally why I prefer to keep it in a manual on-off toggle rather than an automatic on-off depending on if a threat is detected because you could be in the middle of engaging someone, your jammer will turn on, and it will ruin your lock and cause your missiles to go dumb. The jammer works by making it more difficult for an enemy radar to lock you up at a distance. There is a what is referred to a burn through distance, whereas you get closer to an enemy if you were jamming them or if they were jamming you and you were getting closer to them, your radar would be able to burn through the jamming effect and the jammer would have no real impact on the situation. So it's mainly a distance thing. That covers the basics of the jammer. Your EW display, RWR display, is up here. And this shows different threats that your plane detects around you. You are at the center. Out here it shows a MiG-29, currently shown as the priority threat. The priority threat with the diamond here is repeated in our helmet. You see that change to a 49. And now the 49 down here has a diamond around it. This does not show distance, it just shows direction. The stronger the signal, the closer it will be to the center of your plane. It is entirely possible to have something with a strong signal far away and something with a weak signal close up, so don't rely on this for distance, just direction. Speaking of direction and the priority threat that is repeated in our helmet, up in the upper left of our helmet display, we see a circle with a cutout and a diamond. In the middle of the circle is the designator of the threat. Our plane will show in this upper corner whatever it deems as the priority threat. The cutout portion of the circle indicates where we are looking in relation to the plane. If I'm looking forward, the cutout circle is at the 12 o'clock, indicating 12 o'clock off our nose. If I look off to the 3 o'clock, the cutout is now off to the 3 o'clock, indicating I am looking to the 3 o'clock of our plane. And that will change as you move around. The diamond indicates the direction of the currently selected priority target or priority threat. So it's showing me that the priority threat is at about the 5, 530 of the aircraft. If I move my head and I look in that direction and line up this cutout portion of the circle with the diamond, I know I am looking in the direction of the threat. This is useful for dodging missiles and keeping them on your 3 o'clock or your 9 o'clock line and doing what is called a notch. So here I know with the cutout at the diamond that determined threat is off in this direction somewhere. I'll move over towards the SAM field on the HSD to demonstrate what I mean by the 3 or the 9 line as a general missile evasion um, intro, but I will go into more detail on missile evasion in a missile evasion, tutor missile evasion tutorial. As we're flying over to that threat circle, 
it's a good time to talk about the countermeasures. During the controls tutorial, we set up a dice to program our countermeasures. And we set up controls to select the program. Knob 1 for chaff, knob 2 for flares. When we select the countermeasure we wish to dispense, we would press the countermeasures management switch forward keybind in order to dispense the countermeasures. Let's try that now. So I will press my knob 1 keybind. It will select program 1. And now if I press dispense, it will dispense the chaff for that program in the configuration for the program. If I select program 2 keybind and then hit dispense, it will now fire the flares in the countermeasure program that was previously set up. All of this applies the jammer on off and our countermeasures in manual mode that we set during startup. We don't really want to use semi or auto because it is wasteful. And then the jammer or those modes can interfere with your air to air operations. All right, I will fly towards the SAM site. You will see the priority threat changes and you'll hear tones based on if I'm being locked or if I'm being fired on. I'll point those out when they happen. I'm gonna go ahead and get some speed. I'll cover jettisoning in more detail in the air to ground tutorials where it is more relevant. But for now, I only have fuel tanks and no air to ground weapons, so I'll hit my emergency stores jettison to get rid of my center or my wing tanks. Move my knob to normal so I read my plane fuel. And I'll move my HSD scale down so I have a better idea of when I'm going to enter the threat zone. I'm approaching the threat zone. We can see an 11 popped up. We heard a little beep that shows a new contact was populated. It shows the SA-11 threat off to our 12 o'clock. It's a little hard to read this display, so you might have to move down, move your seat up or down, uh, whatever's convenient for you. Generally, I just ignore this, and I worry about the priority threats and what I see on my SA. All right, that tone you hear here indicates I'm being locked by a threat. That tone indicates a lock, the quick beeping. And we'll just wait for them to fire. Again, we can see the priority threat is off in that direction because that is where the cutout circle lined up with the 11. And it's kind of a coin toss if it's going to really tell you what you want to know up here. So you just kind of have to be aware and have a good situational awareness of your aircraft. All right, that tone means we have a missile inbound. So I'm going to turn, pop some chaff. I'm going to get some speed, get low, and put the threat on my 3 or my 9 line. In this case, I'm going to do a defensive turn because they were pretty close. And those missiles were evaded as I popped my chaff. I'm being locked up again by the tone. And you'll notice you have a dead zone coming out the nose and the out the top and the belly of your plane. So if I'm getting locked, I can turn like this and it threat your plane thinks went away. But if I level back out, it comes back. Same with putting the top of my plane towards the threat. You just have to keep that dead zone in mind 
um, while you're flying because you might be evading a missile or a threat, have the tone for the missile warning go away, think you're safe, and it's still coming at you. You just have a dead zone pointed towards the uh, threat. We'll try and demonstrate that here. If I wanted, I could turn on my jammer. It would make it a lot harder for those SAMs to target me. I just have to keep in mind, oh, there's a threat. So I'm going to pop some chaff. I have a dead zone. It's not giving me a threat warning. Pop on my counter or my jammer. As soon as I level out, I'm going to get the threat warning again. And those missiles were evaded. You really do have speed on your side in this aircraft to make evasion easier. Once again, evasion tutorials will follow and they apply to all aircraft. But generally, you want to keep the threat on your 3 o'clock or your 9 o'clock lines, and that will allow you to try and fly outside of the radar cone of the missile or whatever is locking you up. It will depend on the threat and the type of missiles or targets locking you. Sometimes you will be evading the missile itself. Sometimes you'll be trying to evade what is locking you. All right, there's a threat. I'll put the belly towards it, can't see it, I'll level out, and it's back. You can see a whole lot of stuff. I'm going to put my top towards it, the threat's gone, level off, threat is back. Then I'll do a little bit of a defensive turn while popping my chaff. You could hear the low tone, that meant I have very few left think under 10, and now you heard the out, which means I am now out of chaff. So I'm going to use that as my cue to go ahead and get out of dodge. I'll keep the missiles on my 3 or my 9, and they'll have no chance of hitting me. You see the little puffs out there? If, the, if you hear a missile warning, that means it is a radar guided missile and you need to be popping chaff. If you see a missile incoming and you don't hear the radar warner, that means it is most likely an IR missile and you need to be popping flares. Remember back for your countermeasure select program two for your flares forward program one based on how we set it up for our chaff. Alright, that covers basics for EW and countermeasures, plus your jammer. Thanks for watching.